Let's go to the United States now. Now, Sky News contributor Kristen Tate joins me from what is a very hot Houston, Texas. I've been reading about your summer heat waves. Has it gotten any better? Unfortunately, it has not, Steve. Uh, it is like living on the sun down here. And of course, you have leftists in the United States piling on saying this is all because of global warming and we need to elect more Democrats in order to uh, fight the terrible sun monster. But no, it has not gotten any better. It's still very hot here. Whatever happened to global warming, it's now, of course, called climate change. We'll get to Joe Biden in a moment. But first, you and I spoke last time about the leaky border in Texas. It's now not gotten any better as far as I can see. Is that right? 91,000 migrants have been arrested in just one month crossing the border, Kristen. That's right. And, and I want to remind the viewers out there, that's just the people getting caught. There are probably thousands more coming across that are that are evading law enforcement. This is unlike anything we've ever seen. And, uh, you know, back in the Obama days, they used to consider uh, just one or two thousand migrants a day as being, you know, a crisis level. We are way beyond that now. Before we went on air, I was reading an article uh, that said just last month, 1.2 million U.S. foreign workers lost their jobs uh, last month to, uh, you know, some half a million illegal immigrants or immigrants of any kind. I, I mean, this is just having so many impacts. Of course, we think of the drugs that are coming across the border, the crime. But we have to remember people's jobs, American jobs are being lost because of this as well. And of course, it's changing the country culturally. I have friends all over the place in, in Texas whose children are in the public school systems. They tell me that large percentages of these schools now uh, are, are uh, non-English speaking students at this point. It has gotten completely crazy. And soon, Steve, every U.S. city will be a border town. It's not just going to be Texas anymore because these migrants, they're making their way north and this is going to impact the entire United States. I can only imagine there'd be a large number of Americans now that are bordering on resentment of these people coming into your country. Presumably, they don't pay any tax, they work in the cash economy, they take jobs off Americans, and then eventually they're going to flood into the education and the health system. How can the country actually cope with that? It's not sustainable. That's it, There's no way around it. It is not sustainable. And, you know, you have large swaths of the Democratic voting base, these left-wingers who say they're for open borders, but they are completely shielded from this because many of these people live in gated communities, uh, in coastal areas, places like Bethesda, Martha's Vineyard, the Hamptons, these swanky areas where they don't have to deal with these problems every day, but you have working-class Americans in this country, uh, people who get up every morning, take their kids to school and go to work who are dealing with the consequences of these open border policies and it is harming them in a very real way. Now we all remember the promise Donald Trump made about that wall to build a wall. Whatever happened to the wall? Great question. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is one of the uh, that is one of the issues that Trump is being hammered on by his opponents in the GOP primary right now. Where is the wall? He built small sections of it during his administration, but that is certainly one of the biggest failures of the Trump administration. Is that wall just didn't get built? And Trump supporters will say, "Oh, well, he had roadblocks," uh, you know, in in. He had roadblocks in Congress. He couldn't get it done because of the people who were trying to stop him. But the bottom line is it didn't get done. And now he's saying he'll do it if we elect him for a second time. But there are a lot of questions about that uh, because at this point it is a crisis level. And if we keep electing these Democrats, Steve, I don't know what's going to happen. But this country, it can't continue on like this. Thank God Australia, by the way, is an island. That's one of our great advantages. Now, talking about the presidential campaign and the 2024 race, I understand the author of a new biography on President Joe Biden says he would not be surprised, that's the author, if the president drops out, maybe even by the end of this year, out of the race and resigns the presidency. What's your understanding about what Joe Biden might do ahead of 2024? 
Joe Biden cannot make it through a second term. He can barely get through this first term. His supporters and the people around him are nervous every time he speaks in public, every time he falls up the stairs going on to Air Force One, every time he does campaign events. Uh, he is declining rapidly at this point. So the Democrats are in panic mode. They want to replace him. Of course, they can't do it right now because that would make him the lamest of all lame duck presidents. So what I suspect is very likely is he will remain the figurehead, the nominee, whatever, until about New Year's, maybe early spring. And then they will quietly, uh, you know, usher him out and we'll probably end up with someone like Gavin Newsom or, you know what, maybe even Bernie Sanders. Who knows at this point. But yes, there's a very significant significant chance that he will leave and will not be the nominee. Just imagine if you and I were on a board for, say, uh, any company, uh, and the chairman was of the mental capacity that appears Joe Biden's currently is. I mean, it'd take five seconds for you and me to have a meeting and say, OK, guys, it's time to get rid of him. That's exactly right. And it's gotten to the point where many of the people who I know personally who are very strong supporters of Biden, even they want him gone because they realize that his health and his declining cognitive abilities are, are, are a huge liability. But not only that, Steve, it's happening at the same time that these Hunter Biden scandals are kind of gaining traction in the media and becoming harder to ignore. And it would be easier if he had a stellar track record to at least point to, but he doesn't even have that. The economy is kind of in shambles. You got inflation continuing, the border is wide open. So it's really a perfect storm for Democrats. It's a major disaster for them.